My name is Lisa. I wrote the memoir, Small Fry. I wanted to talk to you about why I wrote the book and what I think it is. Maybe some of you have read it, but probably most of you haven't read it. And you might expect this to be some celebrity memoir bollocks, um, as the English would say. I, I wrote it because I wanted to make sense of my own history, which means I wanted to understand my childhood I think I wanted to also time travel a little bit because there were things in my childhood that went by very quickly and both of my parents were young and charismatic and alive and difficult and I felt as if it had gone by quickly but I hadn't necessarily wrested all the blessings from it. So in going back and writing I could slow down time and understand what things meant but I could also kind of in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that you can only do when you write memoir, I could go back and spend time with these people who were so important to me and one of whom sadly isn't around anymore. I think it could be interpreted or it could be thought that this is a celebrity memoir, but it's not. It's really um, the coming of age story of a girl growing up in California in the 80s and 90s in Northern California before and maybe at the very beginning of the tech boom before things had taken over to the degree they have now. Um, there were things that I learned by going back that I wouldn't have expected, certain revelations I had about my own past. For example, I, when I was eight, I started to get to know my father. I was hoping when I, when I began to write this book that my father would be a kind of boring character because then he wouldn't, um, sort of capture the attention of everybody and no one would think of this as a book about him but because anyway so but then he was very interesting on the page uh, to my surprise actually because in life sometimes he was very quiet and didn't necessarily know how to relate with me and was was I think in many ways very awkward so I was sitting in my little converted closet office in Manhattan. I had a tiny apartment and there was no room for an office. So I made a closet into an office and I was dreaming of the beautiful golden light and the days that I had when I was a child with my parents in California. And my father and I, we got to know each other late, as you'll know if you read the book. And um, so we're going for these skates when I'm around eight years old. And then at a certain point, my mom found a college class she wanted to take and she signed up, but she needed help with babysitting on Wednesday night. So my dad said, I'll take her. And I went to his office to wait for him to finish work. And I would sit on the ground and draw and drink sodas from the, from the unlimited soda refrigerator, which was like a, a revelation. And then at a certain point he was ready to go. And then I was alone with him for the first time. And it was like, the fantasy of every fatherless child had come true for me. He, you know, he had a Porsche and he was so handsome and he was so charismatic and we were driving through the forest in his car to his mansion and I finally have this father and it feels like this moment of ecstasy in a certain way. But the other problem with, the problem with it was that he didn't really talk to me and I, I keep on, I kept on trying to think of things to say to him and ways to get him to talk to me, but he would respond monosyllabically and, and not ask me questions. And all this time I thought maybe he didn't care about me yet, or maybe he um, didn't wanna to talk to me and it was only going back now that I'm older than he was then, <laughs> that I realized, oh, he was just awkward and shy. And you know, as much as you don't understand this when you're a kid, kids are a little bit scary for adults. He didn't really know me and he didn't really know how to relate with me. And there were many such realizations and revelations when I was writing this book that when I went back to be with myself as a child, I understood, and sometimes humorously, my misconceptions about the world and that straightening out of misconceptions and almost sympathy, I, I got to, display and experience with my child version of myself felt like it was cathartic because it kind of 
set me free to have a different kind of adult life. And so in some ways, it was just a very selfish thing <laughs> writing this memoir. Um, but I tried to also make it beautiful so that maybe people think when they're gonna pick it up, oh, I'm gonna read about a celebrity. And then they find themselves and their own childhood on the pages. Or they think, oh, I'm gonna pick up her book and I'm gonna read about Steve Jobs. But what they really find is, is the story of a girl, just a girl growing up. Um, and they find maybe that they're, that they're unexpectedly swept up in that story, I hope. Another thing that also happened when I was writing is, uh, at first I sort of wanted to hide the things that I felt ashamed of myself for. For example, I had gone around stealing small, inexpensive things from my father's house when he was dying, which was unusual for me. But also other things, like when I was a kid, when I felt maybe like I was not substantial or didn't really have anything important about me, I would um, make sure to kind of mention or slyly bring into the conversation that my father was Steve Jobs. Um, people didn't really know about who he was at the time. So it didn't always work as a brag but these were things that I knew were shameful. And then perhaps I wanted to hide them from other people because at some deeper level, there were larger things I felt ashamed of, like being a mistake of my father's and being somehow the tarnished or unwanted part of a more glorious story. And so even though I wanted to write a true and complete and literary memoir, I also found myself hiding or obscuring certain things or not wanting to write them out necessarily. There's a part where I'm getting myself into college and that I don't wanna give away. But at first I thought that would be a secret I would take with me to my grave because I felt so badly about it. Um, at the core of it maybe was something like my father hadn't wanted me when I was born, and maybe he had good reason, especially considering he had such good taste, and he was so adored and almost revered by so many people. If he didn't want me, shouldn't that be something significant? Shouldn't we listen to that? And I think in some ways this memoir was a way of writing myself out of that feeling of shame and confusion. So, at first, if I was hiding things I was ashamed of, so I read this wonderful memoir by Tobias Wolf called This Boy's Life. And I noticed that the more that young Tobias was naughty and mischievous and deviant, the more I loved him. So I realized that I also had permission to reveal everything about me that I felt was shameful and embarrassing. And I noticed the more that I did this, the more that I embraced the idea that being fully human might be an asset rather than a detracting part of a memoir, the more that the memoir came alive. And the more, in fact, that the, the feelings of shame kind of lifted and I felt myself just part of human nature and human life and human suffering and my shameful, stories and episodes no longer seemed so unique or indeed shameful at all.